Today, I want to talk about being loyal to a club, getting noticed by club owners, and combining DJ careers with family life. This is Share the Knowledge. For the last 22 years, I've been rocking stages, playing in clubs, and having a lot of fun as a DJ and turntablist, and I've seen and learned a lot. Now it's time for me to share that knowledge by answering the questions that can help you become a better DJ. I'm DJ TLM, and this is Share the Knowledge. Hey guys, what's going on? This is DJ TLM. You're watching Share the Knowledge episode 24 live on Facebook. So welcome. This is my DJ Q&A show. This is where I answer questions that you guys can ask me in advance uh, using Instagram, Facebook, YouTube comments. Just leave that hashtag share the knowledge and I might answer your question on the show. Now, if you're watching the live stream, you also have the opportunity to ask me a couple of questions after I'm done going through these topics I just mentioned. And if you're watching the replay or if you're watching on YouTube or if you're listening to the podcast on SoundCloud, you can also ask questions in the comment section. I will check out those comment sections later on and answer some more questions there. But I want to make this a community effort. So if you see questions in the comment section and you feel you can answer those questions, feel free to jump in, join the conversation, share the knowledge. So. Like I said, live episode, second live episode on Facebook. Uh, I'm excited to do this, and I'm going to start with these questions. Now, the first one, this person actually left the name, but I'm not going to name your name because of the topic right here. I feel this is kind of delicate, and other people might see this episode as well, and that might not be beneficial to you. So I hope you understand. So I'm going to read this question now. This is all about loyalty uh, if you have a residency at a club. So if you currently have a residency and you get offered another residency somewhere better, either money-wise or stature-wise, on the same day of the week, how would you approach this? Would you stay loyal to your current club? And what if you took the other residency and things don't work out and you get replaced at your old one? That's why I'm not naming your name. People at your current residency might be checking out this uh, live stream or the replay here on YouTube. Um, That's not good. So salute to you. Now, here's the thing. Of course, if you decide to take that other job, your old job is gone. They're going to have to replace you. It's on the same day. So if you're not there, they need another DJ. They're going to bring in someone else. It's a risk. First off, it's a risk because you probably won't get any guarantees that you'll be the resident DJ for the next coming years. And even if they give you that guarantee, other things can happen. I've had plenty of residencies like weekly, monthly. Most of those are gone. And a lot of them aren't gone because they stopped hiring me. It's because either the event just wasn't there anymore. It wasn't working out. So they just stopped. A couple of clubs got closed. A couple of clubs got new ownership who wanted to take that entire club into a different direction. So they got in different promoters to do different parties. In all of those situations, I lost a residency. And that can happen Anytime. So you don't really have guarantees. So, of course, if you currently have a residency, are you happy with that residency? Or is it something that's already kind of bothering you or you're just not sure about it? If you're not sure and you feel this new opportunity could be something good, then you can take that risk but realize that it is, of course, a risk. But sometimes taking risks can lead to better, bigger and better things. So, um You really have to assess that situation. Is the new opportunity a lot better? Is it paying a little bit more or is it paying a lot more? Is it a credible organization? Like you said, stature, certain places or parties have that name. So I can understand that it could be beneficial to your own um, reputation if you're playing at certain places. It's like that. But loyalty, I mean, loyalty is important. Just imagine if the residency that you have now, that that's the first place that ever gave you a shot and you've been playing there for years. They've had your back. It's hard 
to just step away from that. But if you're only getting paid like a small amount of money, you've worked your way up to where you're worth more than that they can actually offer you. Yeah, it's hard. I mean, maybe you can find a way in between where you're playing at your old residency one week, the new spot the next week, and just go back and forth. But that would mean that they would have to find another DJ to fill in that one week. And I don't know if the new opportunity is uh, um, has that option. But, yeah, man, you really have to consider how much it is worth to you, um, what it means to you, that residency that you have right now, if you're happy with that. And if the new one is a lot better. So it's hard for me to say take that shot. But sometimes uh, risks can lead to a lot bigger and better things. So uh, if anyone's watching who's been in a situation like this, let us know in the comment section down below what did you do with that opportunity. So this next one is all about balancing uh, a career, DJ career, and family life. So this question is from... No name, forgot to add, or is it in there? DJ Nell Wonder, shout out to you. Uh, so he's a beginner DJ, been practicing for over two years and ready to take that next step into becoming a warm-up DJ or being the main DJ at a local bar slash lounge. Now, first off, salute to you for even considering becoming a warm-up DJ first. That is so important. A lot of you guys, when you start out and you hit that club for the first time, you want to play like it's uh, the last time you'll ever get to party, and you're not realizing the job of a warm-up DJ. So the fact that you're even thinking about that, that's good, knowing that that's the first step. You start as that warm-up DJ, and you learn how to become a good warm-up DJ. That teaches you a lot about DJing because you have to leave all those main hits alone and really work on creating an atmosphere, a vibe, getting people uh, to feel welcome when they come in, warm them up to go to that high part of the evening. But okay, that's not what this topic is about. I just... Uh, was talking about that on IG a second ago. So the question is, how do you balance gigs and family? I have a beautiful supportive wife and a beautiful eight-year-old daughter, but I'm afraid of the hours and how it will affect my family. I would like to hear your thoughts on that. Um, so I've been combining the two for a long time, and I have to take a pause right here and give a major birthday shout out to my oldest son who turned 10 today it's his birthday right now he's still in school um but we'll celebrate when he gets home for a while and then i have to take him to soccer practice so just to illustrate that this is what i do on a daily basis i have family life and then i have a dj career which embodies all dj related things including my channel and the show that I'm doing right now. Now, here's the thing. A DJ career is actually something you can really combine well with family life. You're only going to have to sacrifice a couple of things like sleep. Especially if you have an eight-year-old. An eight-year-old goes to school. Like the first couple of years when you have a newborn, they're sleeping a lot. They have crazy hours. Uh, it's a little bit different. But once they start to go to school and you're the one who's responsible for bringing kids to school, that means you're going to have to get up early during your weekdays. Um, and that's going to cut into your hours, especially if you start to play like on a Friday. I have my gigs on Friday. I'm up at 5.45 in the morning. And if I have a gig on Friday night, that gig might be until 4 or 5 in the morning so then you have a 24-hour day and then when i get home on that saturday morning i can take a shower and then i have to take my son to a soccer uh, game well my apologies to everyone in europe and all around the world except for the u.s for me calling it soccer i know a lot of my viewers are from the u.s that's what you like to call it we do call it football but um just so you know what i mean so for me a lot of my dj work happens during hours that they're asleep if we're talking about gigs so that's not cutting into their time at all so that kind of works for me except for the fact that sometimes i can get very tired here's the thing there's no set thing that's going to work you have a supportive wife that's the most important thing um there has to be a real level of trust that's something that um can mess up relationships if the trust is not there and you're going out to clubs 
even though you're going there to work, your partner might still consider that to be that you're in the club, having a good time, partying, doing crazy stuff. Like for me, that never really happens. I go to the club, I go do my job. I have a blast playing the music that I love, but that's it. So in my relationship, we have that trust. That's the most important thing. But you're going to have to see what works. So you try and get those DJ jobs, you get into that, and you're going to have to see how it works out for you. Sleep-wise and relationship-wise, you need to make sure that you guys have good communication. So if your partner, your wife, has trouble with certain things, maybe the, the late hours, the long hours, not seeing you enough, she's going to have to communicate so you can then adjust and maybe DJ less. Or if it's not a problem, you can even take more gigs. So... Um, you have that right foundation right there. If you have that solid relationship, communication, trust, um, take it from there. There's no set rules. I can't tell you that you can DJ for one day and be daddy the rest of the week. I'm daddy all the time, but I still have my DJ jobs, video jobs and all that. And I combine it to the best of my abilities. And planning is an important uh, part of that as well. So I wish you the best and uh, have a lot of fun. The last question is about getting noticed by club owners. So it's um, it's a long story. But let me just read it real quick. Um, this is from a DJ um, who's been DJing for about five years, done Sweet Sixteens, Cabaret, some fitness center gigs, uh, hookah bar, normal bars, uh, campus gigs in Michigan, a lot of different things. So he's done what he needed to do to get his name out. But it seems like uh, he hasn't been taken seriously. I've watched most of your videos and they're quite helpful. And I'm trying to get my name out there to the clubs. He wants to do club gigs. I think I'm ready, but I don't feel I've been taken seriously. But only by those around me, not the club owners. So when he introduces himself to club owners, he doesn't feel like they take him serious. How do I get the club owners to recognize me and know that I'm serious, but that I don't seem too pushy or seem like I'm bugging them? I've never had an unsatisfied customer. I even have run-ins with radio DJs from here, and I feel like I'm in the right place. But at the same time, I feel like a ghost how do I make them know I'm alive? Uh, I apologize for the long message. Don't apologize. Sometimes context, context is like really important. So the more you can tell me, the more I can think about your situation. Um, well, here's the only thing. You tell me you've done everything you can do to get your name out there. I don't know if that's true because I don't know what you did to get your name out there. And I was having a conversation about this just this morning with someone it is um, it is important. Times are changing. We can't just hold on to the old school ways of promoting ourselves. So back in the days, if you were a DJ, you started to make mixtapes. You started to hand out mixtapes, sell mixtapes. That was a great way to get your name out there. People would share your mixes, and um, that could really help. I still feel you need to have material online. So people can always check your material. So if you're having a conversation, you can sense, send someone a link or um, have it on you on a flash drive so you can always hand someone your material. I still feel that's important. So when that opportunity is there and you can send someone something that can let them hear what you do, you need to have that. That's my alarm. That's going off way too early. That's an alarm to pick up a kid. I have time. Um, but I do have only a couple minutes before I have to round this up. So uh, I don't know if you've done everything you can do to be noticed. Now, the one thing that I would advise you not to do is just to be on the spam tip, even in person. So you don't want to walk up to the to, to club owners every time. Hey, remember me? I'm a DJ. But it is important to get it known, get it out there that you are a DJ. So if you have particular spots that you want to play at, you want to make sure that you are at those places and try to at least interact with the other DJs, the owners, uh, and of course, let them know that you are a DJ. But beyond that, you um, you need to do some work online as well. So I don't know if you're doing that. You need to make sure that you're engaging with the people online. So you have great options to search for 
genres of music so i don't know what type of genres you play but try to find people that are actually into the music that you play and interact with them online and i don't mean just posting stuff like check out my mix with a link but actually engage with those people and add some value so if you're in facebook groups that are about djs uh, or djing or about a certain type of music add something let them know what your style is what you feel what you like what you don't like um and then after a while, people might even check you out to see, hey, that's a dope comment. Who is this person? I presume you have DJ in your name. So then they check you out. Make sure that everything is in order, that, that when they click on your profile on any site, Facebook, IG, that they can find links to your stuff. Um, look, there's a lot of DJs out there. There's not one formula that's going to work. A lot of times it is all about networking as well. People know people, and that's why they get hooked up to play at clubs. So it's not easy. But it's real hard for me to tell if you've done what you need to do. You've done a lot of different gigs. Those gigs maybe have helped to build a little fan base. I don't know about that. Um, but sometimes it's going to be a long, long road. So if you're doing everything you need to do to get your name out there, you're going to need to continue to do that. And that might take time. It might take a long time. So patience is key. Uh, like I said, I wish there was an easy way to... Uh, um, to help you out with this but there's no formula if there was everyone would be out there doing the same thing and we will all get those same gigs which is not possible because there's too many djs out there so uh it's hard man it's hard so i want to continue this conversation with you so actually on ig i want you to tell me what you've done to promote yourself because sometimes i talk to people and they feel like they're doing everything they can and then you ask them what they've done and they tell me that they've been practicing for four months and now they don't understand why they don't have gigs yet. I'm not saying that's you, but I get into those conversations a lot where people feel that they've been putting in the work and they really haven't. If you've been busy for four months or even a year, that's nothing. That's nothing. Um, another thing you could try to do is just approach the promoters online as well most of them will have pages or uh, uh sites and just send them an email as well and maybe even offer to come in there and um uh, do a free gig just as an introduction you never know that could also work i've done a lot of free gigs when i was just starting out um to practice to get the experience and to get that name out there as well make sure that you're filming yourself when you do gigs so that you can put that material online on facebook ig everywhere so talk to me. Let me know what you've been doing so we can continue this. Uh, I want to get into some questions real quick because I don't want to make these shows an hour long. Uh, once again, this is the live stream on Facebook. If you're checking the rerun, you can still drop a question in the comment section. And of course, this will also be posted on YouTube. If you're into the audio version, I make a podcast version of this show. And that goes on my SoundCloud, soundcloud.com slash DJTLM and iTunes. The show is called Share the Knowledge, hashtag Share the Knowledge. So um, that can work out for you if you want to just have this in your ear when you're in the car or walking or in the gym, whatever. What is your advice for someone who produces and DJs and for someone who wants to tour abroad? What would be your advice on this? Um, all right. So you want to do gigs in other countries. That's the question, right? How you can uh, achieve that. Once again, the world has become a lot smaller thanks to the Internet because this used to be way harder. Even when the Internet just started to arise and we were communicating through email and the current social media wasn't in place yet. So you could already email, you could search some stuff on the internet, but you did not have your Facebooks and YouTubes and Instagrams. So back then you could Google and find clubs in different countries and try to find a website and an email address and email them. And 99 out of 100 times, or maybe even more than that, it would not work. You would not even get a reply. Now you have a lot better search options and you can really, again, engage with those promoters and DJs who play at those clubs and try to establish a relationship that way that could work. But to be honest, I'm not the best person to ask this question. I've played in different countries, but I'm definitely not one of those DJs that tours uh, abroad a lot. 
I've been offered certain type of gigs that could take me to another country, but those gigs were more based on you can come over here, we'll pay for a hotel, and you have a good time. Um, when I was just starting out, that would have been a cool offer. Nowadays, bringing it back to that family situation, I'm not going to go away for a week just to have some fun and um, DJ for free. I'm not going to do that at this point in my life. But yeah, it's 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 hard because a lot of DJs want to play in other places. Now you also produce, so I don't know if you're putting out music that could help you out. Have you established a fan base for yourself online already? Is there a way you can check out? And there is like through your analytics, you can find out where most of your viewers and followers are coming from. That's going to give you a good indication of which places you might want to target to see if you can get gigs over there. Um, but this is not something that's crazy easy. I'm not the best person to ask. What I will do is talk to some DJs. And that's going to be future uh, material, future content for my channel, DJ TLM TV on YouTube. Where I want to talk to some DJs who do a lot of gigs abroad and see if there's actually uh, certain strategies that could help you out. Oh, wow. Here's another question. Uh, it's not, it, it is kind of DJ related. There's a question someone's asking me why we stopped ML75. Uh, just a quick recap, and then I have to really end this show. Um, ML75 was a community website um, that was started by me and another DJ, DJ Mani formerly known as Maniac. Uh, we were playing together as a DJ team, Major League. We were both from 1975, so Major League 75, ML75. That became our website just to promote ourselves as DJs. We had a little um, comment section, you could basically call it, and there was so much going on in that comment section that we decided to like expand and turn it into a real community site where people could like uh, get their own profile page, and we had a big forum, and it was actually quite successful. We had over 30,000 subscribed members. We were doing a lot of like a lot of unique visits, a lot of clicks. So it was going pretty well. But honestly, we were basically too creative and not business enough to turn that into a real business model. So we earned a little bit for a while, but we were doing a lot of work with a lot of volunteers. It's real hard to work consistently with the same volunteers and not be able to pay them and still expect them to do the work. Um, so it became quite a big headache and all of our interests were going into different directions. By that time, it was three of us, me, Mani, and MIC. And um, at a certain point, we just had to decide like, look, we're into a lot of different things. This is taking up way too much time and it's not, uh, the rewards aren't really there to justify continuing to do this. So uh, we just ended up just selling that site and letting it go. Uh, still believe that was a very good decision because it really turned into a headache, but we had a blast while it lasted for like, I don't know, nine years or something. Actually, I have to do a separate video. Someone's asking, I got George asking me about insights and techniques of how to read and control a crowd. And that's not something I can really answer quickly. So that's going to make my show way too long. But I'm going to take a screenshot and remember this question. Or I might come back later and just answer it in the comment section. But that's going to be a long story. Um, guys, I'm going to thank you for tuning in. And I'll be back next Monday. I see more questions. I'll get into those off air. Um, every Monday from 1 p.m., I'll be here doing the live stream on Facebook, and you can check out the replay afterwards. I'll be checking the comment section. You can still ask questions. The show will be on YouTube tomorrow, and so will the podcast on SoundCloud and iTunes. So thanks for tuning in. Make sure you check back next time, and I'll see you in the comment section. Peace.